So inshallah we'll go and start. Azbillah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we will learn ayat number thirty-two to thirty-four of Surah Ghafir today, inshallah. The background up to this point is that in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala is quoting a speech that was given by a righteous person in the court of Fir'aun while Musa alayhi salam was present there. And Fir'aun had decided at that point that he should go ahead and kill uh, Musa alayhi salam. So this man stood up there, he belonged to the people of Fir'aun, <clears throat> but he had believed in Musa alayhi salam. And he started a speech, and this is a continuation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran what he said while standing in front of Fir'aun. So in ayat number 32, <clears throat> he is addressing this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him Mu'min. He is addressing the people of Fir'aun in the court, and he is saying, Wa ya qawmi, and O oh my people, inni akhafu, indeed I fear, Alaikum for you or about you, Yawmat Yawmat Tanad, a day, and we will do a breakdown of this word, a day when people will be, this has multiple meanings actually, a day, and this could be the day of judgment, when people will be calling each other for help, or people will be summoned to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the judgment. Then, the ayat continues to 33. The man says, Yawma, that day, the day when it, you, people will be summoned, Tawalluna, you will run away, you will flee. All the people who will be, they will try to run away from the hardship of that day. Mudbirina, turning on their backs. Malakum min Allahi, for you, there will be no one who can protect you or who can save you, min asim, as a person or anyone who can protect you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his accountability and his punishment. The ayat continues, وَمَنْ يُدْلِ لِلَّهُ So whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves in the state of astray, or misguided in this worldly life, fama lahu minhad, then for such a person there is no one who can show him the guidance. Then he is reminding something of the history that took place in Egypt, and that is about the arrival of Yusuf alayhi salam, the first person who arrived in Egypt as a slave and then he became a ruler there, uh, a, a minister there and uh, he brought the guidance to the people of Egypt. So this man is reminding Firaun and his people about Yusuf alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ And indeed had come to you Yusuf or Yusuf. Min qablo before this. Bil bayyinati with the very clear signs and very clear proofs of the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guidance. Then he's saying that, uh, this man is saying that whatever Yusuf alayhi salam had come with, with the guidance, you fell into doubt about that. So that is the next word, Fama zil tum fi shakkin. And you never, and you did not cease, you did not stop being in the doubt, in shak. Mimma ja akum bihi, with whatever he brought to you or he came with, Yusuf alayhi salam. Hatta until, iza halaka, when he died, the Yusuf alayhi salam passed away. Then you started saying something. Qultum, you said, and this is about the people of the Egypt. He's addressing 
the people of the past and the people of the present that kultum you were saying the people of the egypt were saying lai yab asallahu allah will not send allah will not appoint mim ba'dihi after him after yusuf alai salam rasula any messenger <coughs> so when he was present among them they were doubting they were having shak that what he had brought to them was truth or not but then when he passed away then you the people of the egypt in the past started saying now allah will not send any more messenger among us so this man is saying kadalika <clears throat> that's how thus yudillullah allah sends astray or leaves someone in the state of astray astray man huwa whosoever is and he is talking about two qualities of the people one is musrifun the one who transgresses the one who crosses the boundary set by allah subhanahu wa taala <coughs> and the other person is murtab the one who has doubt about something so he is saying that a person who doubts about the truth of allah subhanahu wa taala and he crosses the limits and the boundaries set by allah subhanahu wa taala allah leaves that person in the state of misguidance or astray and does not show him the right path so these are the simple meanings of these words and his speech continues and there are some interruptions by firon but he continues talking and we'll see continue the speech going back to the beginning of ayat number 32 the word starts with ya qaumi we have seen in the previous ayats uh, we have done a breakdown of this word so this man is addressing the people of the firon because they belong to his own qaum his own people so ya qaumi is he is standing in the court and he is addressing the people oh my people and this is a kind of respect and lovely way of saying my people you are my people i belong to you you belong to me and i have concern about you what is the concern he has <clears throat> the word is inni inni is made of two parts and usually the first so first of all the word is inna inna is used whenever you want to bring the emphasis in the statement definitely certainly without any doubt indeed any of those meanings and this word comes in the beginning of this sentence when is someone start saying something so that is inna now in the <clears throat> this word does not come alone by itself it has to be attached to a noun or a pronoun so in this case we are going to attach with a pronoun ya which means me or i first person singular why do we choose to because first of all the man is saying surely i so you have to use this pronoun i you cannot use e, you or he in this case so when you combine these two together it becomes the word which is in the quran written together inni inni means definitely surely i and i is the person who is the speaker here inni okay now the second word he is using is root letters are kha waw and fa and the, we know this is common word khauf khauf means to have a fear about something okay so if we have the three letters fa and and lam fa ala means to do if i put an alif in the beginning and make the grammar af alu <clears throat> af alu brings the meaning of i do so this is first person i this alif in the beginning brings the meaning of i and present tense do so these are this is the format of first person is speaking in the present time so we are going to apply this format on these words so you put alif in the beginning
and first of all pronounce the same way put a hamza then akh wa fo exactly as af alu now this waw with a fataha and zabar is a weak letter so we change the sound of that into a sound of alif and we pronounce not akh afo but to make it easy on the tongue we pronounce akhafo so this word becomes akhafo akhafo means i fear i have this fear i have this worry i have this khauf inni indeed definitely i fear now one more thing happens because akhafo is coming after inni and first word of akhafo has an alif with a sukun on it i mean on a jazam um, hamza on it so whenever is there is a hamza and there is a letter ya or alif or waw before that then this ya should be pronounced with a long ma this is the rule of tajweed that whenever there is a hamza and before hamza there is a ya <clears throat> then this ya should be pronounced inni akhafu okay it's very important if you hear the qari reciting the word is inni by itself short but if there is a hamza after that then it has to be stressed inni akhafu definitely i have this fear <clears throat> okay what is the fear he is talking about he is using the word alaikum alaikum as we know is made of ala and kum kum is you you is a plural here ala can be translated for or about here in this case kum is you <clears throat> and he is pointing you to all the people he is addressing the qaum so he is saying i have this fear about you or for you what is the fear he is using the two nouns there yaumat tanad okay the full word is yaumat tanadi but when we stop we say tanad i'm going to do a breakdown of this word because it's very important to understand that word <clears throat> first of all the first word is yaumun yaumun is a common word yaumun means a day and always two page or two dhammas so this is a day first word is yaumun then the next word has the root letters noon dal and waw okay the meaning of this is to call someone <clears throat> the word nada is a call so nadao and in some dictionaries say the root letters as noon dal and ya regardless because that last letter falls out but we'll take this one noon dal waw means to call someone to make a call to give a nada it's a urdu word also to call now these are three letters and when there are three letters they belong to the group of word which we call faala fa and and lam so noon dal and waw now what we are going to do in this case we are going to make a bigger word and one format of making a bigger word is that we add two letters a ta and an alif <clears throat> and we keep fa in the middle and and lam after that so the word become tafa ala okay which means we are adding two letters so we add two letters ta and alif okay the other three letters i'm just going to copy so this become tanawada <clears throat> tana dawa and waw is a weak letter so we don't care about that so we write together tana da this this ya is a short alif this is not a ya but it's a short alif so sound is tana da what's the meaning of tana da tana da means okay nada means some somebody is calling some someone making a call nada <clears throat> but tana da means if 
two people or more than two people are calling each other that's one meaning if you have a crowd of people and everybody is calling everybody else for help that's tanada the tanada is also used when someone is summoned summoned means like a court is summoning a criminal or a mujrim to be presented in the court so that is tanada also so you can apply both the meanings on the day of judgment people will be called to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the judgment so they will be summoned to appear before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the difficulty of the day of judgment will be such that people will be calling each other for help nobody will be able to help each other so you can apply this tanada and in translators have taken both meanings people calling each other for help or people are being called summoned to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is the meaning of the word tanada now we will make a noun of that noun is tanadun <clears throat> that was a verb but noun is tanadun tanadun means call or summon okay so it's a, it's a noun so this is summon then we are going to put al before that so it becomes al tana al removes on dhamma so it becomes al tanado the summon the call so this becomes a particular proper noun okay another thing is that ta is a shamsi letter so it kills the sound of lam so it pronunciation would be at Tanadu. At So I'm going to write down that word. And it is written this way. Alif. The Lam is not pronounced. Ta is pronounced twice. So put a Shadda on Ta. At That is the word. At means the summon. The call. So now <clears throat> we have one word, yawmun, a day, and attanadu, the summon. So when you combine by putting an off in between, the English meaning will be a day of call, a day of summon, a day that is the day of judgment when people will be summoned to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so when you put an off in between, in, in English, in Arabic, you do the following changes. On the first noun, you remove one dhamma, so it becomes yawmu. On the second one, you remove dhamma and paste, put a kasra. And when you read them together, combine meme with this ta, so it becomes yawmutanadi. When you stop, you say tanad. So the word is yawmut. Tanadi. Important thing is that we still have a Dhamma here. Okay, we have to fix this one also. Okay, because in the Quran it is Fataha or Zabar. <coughs> but <coughs> if the word is standing alone, these two, they will be pronounced as Yaw Muttanadi, the day of summon, the day of call. Okay, now two things happen. First of all, Yawm is a time is a zarfe zaman zarfe zaman means it's representing a time situation the second thing it is coming as a maf'ul of akhafu so when a word come as a object of maf'ul we change the ma to a fataha and it, it is time zone also so final word is yaumat tanadi when you stop you said yaumat tanad this is the only place this word comes in the Quran <clears throat> and the day of judgment is calling, is being called here as a day of tanad, yawmat tanad, a day of summoning, a day of being called, either people are calling each other or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is summoning the people to stand in front in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man is telling the people of the Fir'aun, his own people, Oh my qawm, oh my people, I fear 
that you will be facing a day that is called the Yaumut Tanad, the day of summoning. Then he is further telling you what is that day? What else will happen in that day? So he's using two words here. Yauma. Yauma means a day. He's pointing to the again Yaumut Tanad. But he's using the two words. Tawalluna mudbirina. <clears throat> so they both are common word, but let's do the breakdown. Vau, Lam, and Ya are the root letters. The word we know, Wali or Aliya or many other words are made by. What is a Wali? Wali is a very good friend of you, something who cares for you. So someone who can be close to you, okay? So these are the three letters. Fa'ala, three letters, Wa'alamiya. And this means a friend or someone close to you. We are going to make a bigger word by adding a shadda on the middle letter. It becomes Fa'ala. So this will become Wa'alam with a shadda and Ya. Walla. This has a very different meaning. Walla means to run away. Walla means to flee. Someone who runs away. So Walla means to be close to someone as a friend, but Walla means you run away from the friend or whoever is there. So this is the word Walla that we are going to use in this, okay? Now, when we put a ta in the beginning, it becomes the grammar of you. Okay, and when you put wow, it becomes the plural and noon. Okay, so if you put these two things in front of these words, ya is a weak letter, it goes away. So it becomes tovaluna. Tovaluna means you. He's pointing to the people, ya kaum. A day, that will be the day. Tovaluna, you will run away. All of you will be running, fleeing. Okay. Like, like you are being punished and you just want to run away from the difficult situation. Now, he's not saying only that you will run away, but he's pointing one more characteristics of running away, mudberina. So let's look at that word. Some of these words are common, but dal, ba, and ra. Dabara is to show your back. Okay. Back is used, doboron is the behind, the back part of the body. So this is to show the back, okay. Now a person, like a, when we put a meme, it becomes Muslim. A person who is doing the activity of submission. So these are the root letters and if I put Adbara means a person who is showing you his back, but meme will make a doer, like a Muslim mu'min, when you put a meme in the beginning, it becomes a doer. So mudbir, mudbirun is the word. Mudbirun is a person who is showing you his back. While he is running away, He's not running away in a direction where you will not, but he will turn around and run away. So you will be seeing his back. So Mudberun is one person, Mudberina is the plural, because he's talking about the plural of all this time. So Yauma Tovalluna, he's saying, this Momin is saying in the court of Iran, a Yamut Tanat, a day of accountability and summoning will come upon you. And that day will be so difficult that you will run away. You will flee mudbirina on your backs. You will turn away and run away from, from there. So that is what will happen on that day. It will not be an easy day. Then he is further saying, Malakum min Allahi min asim. So let's first to the word which we no, but we don't know the meaning. En swad min. This is this means to protect someone. And we have a na name which is called Asim. Asimun is a person who protects. A protector. 
so this is the word ase mun is the word actually with the two dhammas but when you put min before that min in this situation has a meaning of any and min is a harf jar harf jar will change two dhammas to two kasras so final word will be min ase min any protector any one protector any one who can protect her min allah these two words means from allah so and ma means not lakum means for you so he saying on that day when you will run away on your backs ma lakum there is no one for you min allah from allah min asimin any protector so allah's accountability will be there allah summoning me will be there and all you would do is trying to run away but that day <clears throat> no one will be able to help you protect you from allah subhanahu wa taala so important thing is that we have to translate based on the context min is coming twice here one time min is coming with allah the word is allahu so one more thing in the recitation <clears throat> the actual word is min so first the meaning of this min is from and the second word is allahu allahu so min is a harf jar first thing it does it changes the noun from dhamma to a kasra pesh to a zair now when you read together sukoon cannot be combined so we change purposely in the recitation this to a fataha this is just for the tajweed purpose then you say me nallahi so that's the word so here the meaning should be taken as from allah okay if allah wants to summon you then it is from allah he is going to do your accountability that is from allah <coughs> but the second time when min is coming is coming with the word asimun the word asimun means protector and min is a harf jar so asimun will change to asimin here you cannot translate this from this is another meaning of min and which is any so any protector there is no one any protector <clears throat> from allah or against allah malakum for all of you there is no one then the third part of the statement is that and that's usually a part of the statement wa man yudlilillah fa ma lahu min had generally khatib in friday reads that part of the ayat wa man Now here the word is man. Man means whoever or who, or whomsoever, or whom. Any way you can translate that. Now <clears throat> the word is dawad, lam, and lam. Dalala, the word we know we read all the time. Dalin. So dalala means to misguide someone. to leave someone in the state of astray gumrah karna ya gumrah ho jana dalala so when you put a ya in the beginning it becomes third person grammar yaf alo he does in this case first of all you have to make a four letter word adulala so <coughs> let me go a little bit more detail we have these three letters dawad lam and lam three letters they belong to bab number faala one and the meaning is someone is gone astray someone has gone to the state of misguidance if i put an alif in the beginning it becomes a four letters <coughs> bab ya faala and this will become adulala adulala means someone is misleading someone okay here the person is going astray by himself here two people are involved one is going astray one is sending him astray 
So this is the word we are going to use. Adolala means someone is putting you in the state of misguidance. Now, this is being used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we will have to translate accordingly. First of all, this, if I put a ya in the beginning with a dhamma, it becomes third person's grammar. Yod lilo. Yud lilo, like yuf ilo or yaf alo. Okay. Yud lilo means he sends astray. Now, when it is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not misguide or mislead any person. Allah leaves a person in the state of misguidance because of the deeds of the people. If people want to go wrong and guidance is shown to them, if they don't return to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah leaves them such a person in the state of misguidance. So that's the meaning of yud lilo. He leaves someone in the state of misguidance, but after that is the word Allah. <clears throat> but before there were more things happen. So let's do this much first. Yud lilo, he goes astray or he sends astray. When you put a man, uh, man means whoever, <clears throat> this becomes a conditional statement or whomsoever, <clears throat> okay. man yud lilo, but man is a harf -e shartia here, and one of the characteristic is that it changes <clears throat> into a state of sukun, the last letter. <clears throat> so word becomes man yud lil. The important thing is that in the starting with yud lilo, man will change to yud Lil. And when you read them together, you have a noon and you have a ya, then Qari will recite is a hunna. My yud lil. Idgham will be done. My yud lil means whomsoever he leaves in the state of misguidance. My yud lil, whomsoever he. This, part, this grammar has a he in it. So meaning up to this point will be whomsoever he leaves in the state of misguidance. And the part is that my, you don't pronounce man anymore, but my, so you put a shadda here and pronounce gunna. And then last letter is yud lil. If that is the only statement, then my yud lil means whomsoever he, we don't know who he is, sends in the state of astray or misguidance. Now we are going to put another word after that. And that word is Allahu. Two things will happen. First of all, the word is Allahu. So Allahu in the Quran has a pesh or dhamma which means this noun will replace he here. So this he will be gone and the meaning will be Allah leaves in the state of astray. Allah is going to leave a person in the state of misguidance. Now the other problem will be that when you have a sukoon on the last letter and this is a sukoon, you cannot pronounce these two together. So Qari will come and help you to pronounce. What he will do, that he will replace the sukoon by a kasra. Why kasra? Because this is also a sound of kasra. This is a sound of kasra. It's easy to pronounce if two similar sounds are there. If he puts a fata there, then he will say yudli lal. It's not easy on the tongue. So he will change this sukun to this kasra, and then two kasras are easy to pronounce next to each other. Wamai yud lilillahu. So whomsoever Allah leaves in the state of misguidance or astray. <clears throat> Famalahu fa and a ma. So fa is actually a jawab a shart. So 
और देन मा मीन्स नॉट लहू मीन्स फॉर हिम ला मीन्स फॉर एंड हु मीन्स हिम हिम इज अ पर्सन हु हैज बीन लेफ्ट इन द स्टेट ऑफ मिस गाइडेंस सो फॉर मा लहू देन फॉर हिम अगेन then for that person the person whom allah has left in the state of astray jawab is coming then for such a person we should focus on this because this is this part is recited every friday in the khutbah fa ma lahu min had had is from hidayat had dal ya means to guide and hadun is a person who guides someone hadun we say hadi but full word is hadun now again the the word is min okay two things will do min will change to the must to kasra so it will become min hadin and min will be translated as any again here any guide <coughs> so if allah decides to leave someone in the state of misguidance then for such a person fama lahu for him min ha din there is no one who can show him the guidance okay when you stop at the ayat or at the end of the sentence then ha din is pronounced as had like you have a sukoon here had okay so this is the meaning now the, this man continues saying he says وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ يُوسُفُ Again here, قَدْ is used for the past tense. Something about past tense is mentioned. لَام is a لَامِ تَوْكِيد. وَلَقَدْ and definitely in the past. جِيم يَحَا or حَمْزَ with an alif. It means to come. When you put three fatas, it becomes faala. He did. This is translated into alif, so it is become ja a. Ja means he came. Third person came. Someone. Again, important thing is that there is a hamza. Hamza will force this alif to be pronounced with a long mad. Ja a. He came. Kum means to you, to to you people. now this kum includes the people who are present there and the people of the past history in egypt kum to all of you yusuf will replace he so the meaning will be and indeed yusuf came to all of you min qabl before in the past the history so he is reminding them that before some time before yusuf had come to you bil bayyanat very common words bayyana means something which is very clear bayyana full word is bayyanatun bayyanatun means something which is very very clear this is a surah al bayyana so bayyanatun make it a plural it will become bayyanatun okay a common words have come many times then you put al al bayyanato something which is very some some signs some proofs which are very clear when you put a b in the beginning <coughs> it brings the meaning of with so final word will be bil bayyanati b is a b is a harf e jar so the last letter will be kasra so bil bayyanati with very clear signs with very clear proofs of allah subhanahu wa taala's guidance so he is reminding his people that in the past yusuf prophet yusuf had come to you and he did not come by himself but he brought or he came with very very clear signs of allah subhanahu wa taala but he is saying what did you do <clears throat> so that is we have to translate four words together to fully understand fama ziltum fi shakkin shak we know shak means doubt 
to fall into doubt. Fi means in. And the word, so let's break it down because we have to start with the, these letters. Za, Ya, and Lam. <clears throat> these are the root letters. The meaning of these three is to seize, to stop about something. So just keep in mind, stop, word, seize or stop, okay? So these are three letters, fa'ala, means to do. If I make the grammar of fa'al and put a tum at the end, fa'al tum, this tum, ta and a meme, bring the meaning of you, plural, did. Fa'ala means to do. When you put a tum at the end, it becomes the grammar of you, and this you is plural. And the past tense, you did. I'm going to apply this rule here. <clears throat> Remember the meaning of the simple meaning is to stop. Or to remain or to, there are many meanings, but just, just take one. To seize or to stop. This thing. Apply the grammar here, simply put tum at the end of this. So you have a za, you have a ya, and you put sukun, just like exactly this, and then you put a tum at the end. So this will become za, yal, tum, okay? Ya is a weak letter, it has a mismatch because the sound of ya is kasra, here is a fatha. So what we do, we throw away this ya, but its sign of kasra we put under the za. So this will become zil tum. That's the word here in the Quran. <coughs> zil tum means you, <coughs> plural, stopped. <coughs> you seized. You stopped. Zil tum. Now put a ma before that. Ma means not. So the meaning will be, you did not stop. You did not cease. Fa means then or so. What did you not stop? Fi shakkin. So the word is shakkun. Shakkun means doubt. Shak, we say in Urdu. But the full word is shakkun. Shakkun means doubt. Fi means in. Fi is a harfajar. Harfajar will change to the mask, to paste, to kasras. Fi shakkin. In doubt. Ma ziltum fi shakkin. You never stop doubting about something. Yosef brought the guidance to you. Bil bayinat. Clear proof. But. Fa means can be translated as a but. Fa ma ziltum fi shakkin. You never stopped, you never ceased, you did not stop doubting that, did he really bring the guidance or he was just doing something else? So you always doubted. He's telling the people of Egypt in the past that Yusuf came to you with clear proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you never ceased, you never stopped <clears throat> being in doubt. Mimma is of that. Ja'akum, same word. He came, bihi means with. So whatever Yusuf came with, you always were in doubt that is this is a guidance or not, or this is something or not. So what happens? He kept inviting you, Yusuf alayhi salam, and you kept doubting about him until something happened. Hatta ida halaka. Hatta means until. Ida means when. Halaka, halaka means to die. Halakona means to die. Halaka, he died until he died. He lived among you. He kept telling you the guidance of Allah. You kept yourself in doubt about that until the time of his death came and he passed away. Halaka, Yusuf died. Then you started saying something after that. What did you say? Baasa are the root letters. Baasa means to appoint or to send. Baasa te Rasul is the appointing or sending of the messenger. 
So Basa means to send or to appoint someone. So you put a Ya in the beginning, it will become Yaba Aso, he will appoint. Then the word is Allahu after that. So he will go away. It becomes Allah will appoint. So let me just do a full breakdown. First of all, Yab Asu. Yab Asu, if I write down them together, it will be written Yab Asu. Important thing is that last letter has a Dhamma. So sound is Yab Asu. The meaning is he will send or he will appoint. Then the uh, next important thing is that you look at the next noun, Allahu has a Dhamma on it. So this Allahu will replace he. So the meaning will be Allah will appoint. Okay. Now put Lan before that. Lan does two things. First of all, its meaning is never. And it looks at the next word, which is a verb, and changes the last letter into a zabar or fatah. Okay, so lan yab asallahu. Okay, again noon and ya together will make the sound of noon gunna ajgam. <clears throat> so you will pronounce lai yab asallahu. Allah will never send. Mim ba'dihi, ba'd means after, and who means him, who is pointing to Yusuf alayhi salam. So ba'dohu after Yusuf. Min is a harfajar, it will change, let me write down because these changes are so much in Arabic language that original word disappears basically. So the full word is ba'dun. Ba'dun means after. Then you combine this with who. The word is who. Who is pointing to Yosef and his meaning is him or he. So when you combine these two, one Dhamma goes away and the word becomes Ba'adohu. Ba'adohu after him and him is Yosef. Okay, now put min before that. Min is a harfajar. Harfajar will change this dal to a kasra. So final word is min ba'adi hu. Still going to more change it. First of all, when min, noon and ba come together, the noon loses its sound and it turns into a meme. So it becomes mim ba di. Kari will say it's easy for me to read this as a kasra because two kasras read easily, so he will pronounce he. Mim ba di he. After him, after Yusuf. You said, kultum, you said, so this, this word I didn't do. Kultum, you said. Kala means to say, Koltum, you said, means the people of the Egypt were saying, Allah will never send Mim Ba'adihi after him, after Yusuf, Rasulah, so the word is Rasulun, messenger, and again it is coming as a maful of Basa, so Rasulun will change to Rasulan as an object. Always object changes to two fatas and we add an alif. So Rasulan, when you stop there, there you pronounce Rasula. Allah will never send after Yusuf messenger, any more messenger. You kept saying that, okay? So what he's saying, Kadalika. Kazalika kaf means like or same or as. And dalika means that. So kadalika and the simple meaning in English is thus 
or that's the way it is. So combine these can be translated as thus, and that's the way it is. Yudillullahu, Allah sends astray. Okay, same word before dalala, Allah sends astray or Allah leaves in the state of astray. Whom, man means whoever or who. Hova means he. Then two characteristics are mentioned. One is sarafa, seen, ra and fa. Sarafa means someone who transgresses, someone who crosses the limits or the boundaries, sarafa. Musrif is a person who goes beyond the limits, beyond the boundaries. Transgressor, so that is the first word. The second word is from these root letters, Ra, Ya, and Ba. This means to doubt. Raib means doubt. Zalikal kitabo la raib fi. In that book, there is no doubt. So Raiba means to doubt. A person who doubts a lot is called Murtab. The word Murtab is from these root letters. You put a meme in the beginning, it becomes the doer. So Murtabun, the one who is a doubter, and Musrifun, the one who is transgressors. So the rule here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers his guidance. Okay. A person, first of all, he keeps breaking the limits and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He keeps breaking the boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a Musrifun. Second thing is that he keeps doubting about the guidance. So if a person continues doing these two things, Allah's judgment is that Allah will not guide that person. Allah will leave that person, Yudlilullah, that's how Allah leaves a person who keeps doing these two things. He keeps being doubtful about the guidance and he keeps crossing the limits, Musrifun, Allah leaves him in the state of misguidance. So he is reminding the Firaun's people that think about this. In the past, you have done that. You are doing the same thing. You have another messenger among you now. So with that, inshallah, we will stop here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the Quran and act upon it. Sadaqallahu al-Azim.